Alright, in this video, I'm going to be doing a review of the Sand Engine Mod 9 ROM, the official version of it, rather, uh, that is available for the Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket for AT&T, and for the Galaxy S2 LTE for Rogers. Uh, both phone versions use the exact same ROM because their hardware parts are almost identical because they run off the same cell phone frequencies in the US and Canada. Uh, I am running the Rogers version of the Galaxy S2, but let me show you even more proof that I'm actually running it. Go to the system settings, about phone. All right, so as I showed you, I'm running the Rogers version, but it says i727 instead of i727R. That's because when you flash the ROM, it just basically changes it to a uh, Skyrocket model. Not a big deal. And you're running Android 4.0.4, which is Ice Cream Sandwich, but it's based off of CyEngine Mod version 9.0.0. It says Skyrocket again, even though I'm running the Rogers version because I use the exact same ROM. Okay, so the fact that it says Skyrocket here doesn't affect it. Wi Fi works fine, data works fine, uh, Bluetooth works fine, any wireless piece of technology works fine, no problems. Screen sensitivity is great, uh, front facing camera works, rear camera works. Uh, there is a problem with the camera. I'm not sure, okay, any con I mentioned, I'm not sure if it's going to affect Skyrocket users. It shouldn't. It should be the same for Rogers and AT&T, but I'll point out these two, two problems. Um, so basically, when you're taking pictures, whatever I see in the screen is fine. But when I switch to video mode, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but what I'm seeing right now is supposed to be 720p quality. But whatever's showing up on the screen here is very grainy and blurry. Like, I mean, really, really bad. It looks like it's out of focus completely. However, while it's recording, it's actually recording clear. So when you play the video back, it'll be crystal clear. But as you're trying to preview what's being recorded in this screen, it looks really bad. Okay, so that might throw you off if you try this wrong. But don't worry, when you play the video back, it's crystal clear. Um, what else? The top notification drawer can be customized. As you can see, I have... Wi-Fi, data, and data to me is important to have at the top. You can customize this tray. I'll show you that in a bit. The dialer and the contacts, as you can see the person icon, which I'm not going to select because I don't want you to see my phone numbers, are in the same app. In Android 4.0.3, which released for our AT&T a little while back, they had the dialer and contacts app in two separate apps for some insane reason. I'll never figure out why. Actually, that was Samsung's fault for designing it like that, and that was at and fault for allowing such a ridiculous thing to happen, but whatever. Um, what else can I get? show you guys? Let me just get into the app drawer. Stock ice cream sandwich is based off the ice cream sandwich. It's, it's the I, I, ice cream sandwich code that San Engine Mod took, rebuilt it from scratch, and added their own customized features like this top of the notification drawer. So you got widgets here, apps here. Oh, one more thing from the notification drawer. If you select this thing, it'll show up settings. As you can see, the settings menu is a lot more extensive. Uh, that's because you have sign engine mod settings. So here you can select launcher. You can customize the launcher, how many screens, the transition mode for the screen, the home screens, and the app drawer. I'm not going to get to any more details of this. You can customize lock screen with customizable. Um, let me just show you. Turn it back on. You can customize this sliding unlocker you can here you have a camera app you can slide to unlock additional apps of your choice uh, you can put your own customized background picture which I'm not gonna do because it'll take forever to go through these features at any point if I show you a menu like this just pause the video read it for yourself if it's clear enough and yeah anyway one of the coolest things about Sanage mod is that you get theme support you can download hundreds if not maybe even thousands of themes on the internet uh, usually in XDA forums and basically what you can do is uh, just a very quick example if you download a theme and say it's something like lime theme so it'll take the current sign engine mod theme and see where say you have these neon blue colors with the writing it'll maybe change it to a, like a lime color and your dial pad will go from a neon blue dial pad to like a uh, lime color everything will turn to a lime color so you can customize your ROM even further with themes and of course in the settings option you have system which you can tinker with the font size wallpaper notification drawer uh, which is what I showed you where is it if you change the widget buttons this will allow you to select what displays at the top here, okay? And of course you can configure the order in which those widgets are, like this. Just drag them around, okay? 
uh, status bar. You can change the battery icon to like a percentage style instead. It'll give you a percent of the battery. Um, you can display the time or choose not to, stuff like that. What else? What else is different? I'm only choosing things that really stand and pop out for me. Oh, one really cool feature. Uh, how can I demonstrate this with you? Okay. On our on our devices, we have no LED notification light, which I really miss from a lot of Android devices. You know when you get a missed text or call? Older models used to have this notification LED that will blink, telling you that, yo, you got a missed call, email, text, something. Well, our phone doesn't have that, and a lot of new phones don't. So what happened is, the Sanjamod team in Sanjamod 9, this is really, really neat. Whenever you get a missed call, missed text, missed email, or missed message from any type of uh, online messaging app, like Google Plus, these lights will light up. So there's no more hassle of turning your screen on constantly to figure out if you got a missed call or message or something. If you just see that these are solid white while the screen is off, you'll know I missed a call or something. Now I can turn on my screen to see if, this, if I, uh, what, what exactly did I miss. And they light up just like this, as if the screen was on. But obviously the screen stays off, but these light up at the bottom. So it's a superb feature. Now, the big con, this is the thing that might throw some people off to not want to install this ROM at all, is the gallery. And basically for the gallery, what happens is that videos you record while using this ROM they show up here. Videos before that were already on your SD card do not show up and do not load at all. In fact, the gallery app just crashes. Um, videos that are recorded with this ROM, they, they are hit or miss. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So far it's working. Let's see if it actually plays. Okay, so starting with the bottom. Alright, so it, it works for now. But honestly, it's a hit or a miss. The gallery app is only good for displaying pictures for videos. It's really, really bad. I found a substitution for this because I love Sign Engine Mod 9. Um, the substitution I use is called MX Player, which is also in the Google Play Store. I'll have a link for this app in the description below. It's a great app. It plays almost any file type I could throw up at it. Um, and if you need more codecs, they have app extensions for that in which you can download more codecs, and it's free. So it plays all my videos, it's, that app has never failed me once, that's my substitute for the gallery, when viewing videos only. If you want to see pictures, you gotta use the gallery, or another third party app. So that's pretty much my review, uh, the music player is called Apollo, I don't want to get too much into this, the album is going to take a while to load because I'm on data and it's the first time I've loaded it up. But anyway, that's my review of it, uh, so the con is that while recording a video, the picture will show up blurry. But when you play it back, it's fine, but the gallery for playing videos is kind of broken. Okay, closing thoughts on this ROM. Uh, basically, it is stable. Uh, just like Sanjay Mod team says, it's a release candidate. So it's ready for day-to-day -day use. Like I said, telephone calls, all uh, wireless communication services work. The problem is when you're recording a video, whatever you see as a preview is recording is blurry. But when you play it back, it's fine. However, the video... Uh, cannot play, be played in the gallery. The gallery just seems to be broken when it comes to videos. When it comes to showing pictures, it's fine though. So the video camera problem, which is very minor because the camera still works, and the video playback problem can both be resolved by downloading third-party apps in the Google Play Store. So yes, it is still a ROM that I would use personally, but after showing the, and demonstrating the problems, you may or may, uh, may or may not decide to use this ROM, but it's ultimately up to you. So if you found this video useful, feel free to check out my website in the description below. Hit the like button, it does help, or subscribe, and thanks for watching.